higher order theories and neural network models. We can think of the left hemisphere interpreter as a possible middle position between the global and local theories. According to this view, consciousness is certainly more than just early sensory processing, but to the extent that some late stage process in the left hemisphere is involved, the function is not necessarily global broadcast either. It isn't to make the sensory signal stronger or more globally available per se. Rather, it interprets the signal and tries to make sense of it. In the context of our emotions and why we act a certain way, this interpreter model seems very powerful. For certain emotions, such as shame or guilt, high-level conceptual thinking seems very relevant. Sometimes, researchers say that certain schema are involved. These are conceptual models of what each emotion is about, kind of like an outline for a paper or blueprints for a building. Emotions are very much rooted in our culture, stories, our sense of self, etc. Given a situation, how we react emotionally may depend on these high-level factors inside our own minds. But one may worry that this ties consciousness a bit too much to linguistic and high-level conceptual processing. And that's fair. There is this idea of consciousness as a way of reflecting upon ourselves conceptually. But remember that we are here to talk about subjective experiences, which occur even in the most simple perceptual processes, like detecting a flash of light or a meaningless sound. Do those experiences really require language too? But there are alternatives to the interpreter model that are somewhat similar in spirit, but that don't assume as much about language and concepts. For example, Axel Clearmans has built connectionist models along these lines. Remember that way back in class one, we talked briefly about neural network models. Usually, these models take a sensory input, like a picture, for example, and then classify the content of that input. So basically, it gives an output about what the objects are in that picture. Let's call these first-order perceptual networks. Clearman and his colleagues have built networks that sit on top of these networks. That is, we can have an additional network that takes input from the first-order perceptual network in order to evaluate how well that first-order network is doing. That is, it gives an output that estimates how likely it is that the first-order perceptual network will give a correct answer for a particular input. We call the networks that sit on top of the first-order perceptual networks higher-order networks. This theory posits that consciousness depends on these higher-order networks. These ideas are very similar to the concepts that we talked about in Class B, relating consciousness to metacognition and the PFC. Turns out, these ideas can be traced back in philosophy, at least all the way back to the 17th century and John Locke. 